go up the A55 and then we've got to turn off left somewhere. Before we get to the Menai Bridge, we've got to cut across, I think. Yeah, you want the A5, really, I think, Ross. Yes, now Mona. I don't recognise any of the places on this map. Go on, turn around. Right. You all stupid oh, old buffoon. Well, here we are. This is Linny Gorse Fishery, and there are several lakes here on this complex. Lots of specimen fishing available for big carp and big catfish, but we've opted to fish here on the Match Lake because we need to catch fairly sizable fish and we need to catch them quickly. Now, there's plenty of different species in this pool. There's carp, tench, orf, perch, and one or two unusual species for still waters like barbel and chub. Now, Mick and I are approaching the fishing slightly differently. I'm fishing on the pole. It's a very difficult day for that. The wind's strong, it's swirling in all sorts of different directions, and controlling the tackle is very, very difficult. And that's why Mick, who's not familiar with pole fishing, has opted to fish the feeder. The idea between the two of us is to build up a big weight of fish. We're looking for about 70 pounds. And let me tell you, in these conditions, with the wind blowing, it's not gonna be easy. There's the first fish of the session, and it's racing up and down this little channel like a speedboat, really. It's going all over the place. Look at him go. Yeah. I caught that one on corn, actually. I think the maggot's a good bait, but it seems to attract lots of little perch. Now, we're going to put these fish today in a keep net for the purposes of weighing them. But if you're into your barbel fishing, especially on the river where you're getting bigger fish, it really is a no-no to put them in a keep net. They'll be okay here, fish of this sort of size, but when you're catching big barbel, put them straight back in the water and don't bother with the keep net. It's, uh, it's difficult with barbel because the dorsal fin catches in the mesh. Oh, it's a barbel. No wonder it's fighting well. That's my first ever still water barbel. Surprisingly enough, it looks just like a river barbel probably getting on for a pound, so if we keep catching them, we'll soon build up the weight. Well, one of the things that's not making the fishing any easier today is the wind, and it's really difficult because it's coming in about four different directions every few seconds, and it's really hard just to hold the pole out there and stop your tackle getting blown up into the gorse bushes on the far side, but the reason I'm fishing like this is because that's where the fish are, you know, they're they're tucked hard into that cover on the far side. And the tighter I can fish, the more successful I'm gonna be. The, the thing I'm gonna to have to do is just be patient, I think, and hope that ultimately the wind dies off a little bit. And that will give me a fighting chance, I think. There's plenty of fish there. I've been feeding for about 10 minutes and you know the float goes out there and it's dipping and weaving up and down. So there's plenty of fish feeding there, but I've gotta hold the pole steady to get the presentation I need and uh, it's really not easy. We've just had a whacking bite. It's just pulled the tip right round. I don't know whether this is another barbel. It's going round and round like one. Oh, it's a carp, and it's a ghost carp. They really, really do fight on this light tackle. <laughs> it's leading me a right merry dance, this one is. Yeah, that's how it's in. Yeah, look at that. Let's have a look at you. Oh, and as you see, you take the pressure off a of barbley's hook and it drops out. As long as you keep the pressure on, there's no problem. And there we have it, a lovely little ghost carp. Oh. Well, the problem with these barbel is that they shoot off at real high speed as soon as you hook them. And you've really got to be on your metal because if you don't, they'll go straight through the little gap in the island in front of me or around the tree or something. So as soon as you hook one, you've got to ship the pole straight back. They're real turbocharged fish and they're much quicker actually than carp.
Well, I don't need to describe the weather. As you can see, it's absolutely awful. As if the wind wasn't enough, now it's started to pour down with rain and it's really coming down heavily. It just seems that the weather really won't break for us. I think if it did, we'd have some outstanding fishing here. Well, we've left Rosniger and we had 42 pound 11 ounce in the keep net. We've travelled 18 miles to the Lindy Gorse fishery, so that gives us 24 pound 11, plus anything else we can catch today. The fishing here is really, really good actually, and um, there's plenty of fish in front of us. We're getting loads of bites, lots of these small barbel, occasional carp. I've had roach, small chub. You can't knock that. The weather has made it very, very difficult, and um, as well as the awkward swirling wind that's a little bit calm now, but it's been horrendous at times, literally ripping the pole out of my hands. And then we've got the torrential rain, and as it's going, I think we're doing okay. I think it's another one of those little barbel going all over the place. You can see the mouths on these barbel are really clean. No hook marks, no red marks at all. And that's because of the use of barbless hooks. I've got a nice mirror carp here, and that's what we need to build the weight. It's uh, getting towards early evening now, and uh, we're really beginning to run out of time. I don't think we've got enough fish yet. We're motoring away nicely, but the Bad weather has made the fishing really difficult and now we're just trying to pile the fish on. There's no room for finesse here, we're just fishing as fast as we can. It's real fast and furious stuff, just trying to get as many fish as we can in the net. <laughs> About a pound and a half, I guess. Well, that's a little mirror carp. In fact, it's a very tiny mirror carp. And here's the big scales that look like mirrors that give it its name. Look at them glistening in the sunshine. Everyone's unique with a different pattern of scales on its body. I think I've had about five different species so far. It's brilliant. Well, the heat's really on now. We've had very difficult conditions with the wind. It's just eased off a little bit, and it's making the fishing much, much easier. The swim's absolutely fizzing with fish. It's like a jacuzzi out there at the moment. But of course it's getting very, very late in the day and I'm trying to pile up as much weight of fish as I can in the time left available. It's real fast and furious fishing. Got no real time to sit here and enjoy it, to be honest. It's just get the fish in the net as quickly as possible and try and pile on the weight. But I don't know, maybe we're losing the race. I don't think we've caught enough fish yet. Mick's just gone over to the pole. He's been struggling with the feeder to get tight enough to the far bank. He's now fishing against the pads, seeing if he can just catch those extra fish that we need. It's a real test of skill, it's a test of endurance, it's a race against time, and quite honestly at the moment, we're definitely losing it. We're not catching enough fish. Well, I'm really quite excited because pole fishing is something quite new to me. I've only ever caught two fish in my whole life on a pole, and I'm into one now, and it is so much easier than fishing with the feeder. You can get the presentation absolutely precise and uh, I've always known that, but I've never got around to actually doing it. And I've got a bite almost instantly. Look at this. I've been struggling to catch on the feeder and I've just put the bait exactly where I want it with the pole and got a bite straight away. It's amazing. It's a common carp, fully scaled. About a pound and a quarter. Nice fat one, very useful fish. Everyone counts now. I think it's going to be close. Well, 
Well, here's the moment of truth. I think it's fished very well at Linney Gorse today, considering the conditions. It's been vile weather. We've had a real good go at this. We've got £24.11 in the keep net already, plus what we've caught today. And our target was to get in total to over £70. So we need to have caught about £50. And it's a little bit touch and go, but we're going to weigh in in the time honoured fashion, starting with Sir M's fish. Can you get the wasting ready? I will. I haven't got a great deal, so I hope you've got more than me. Well, I think you've done all right. That sounds like a healthy net to me. There's quite a lot of fish in there. Not bad, actually, Sir M. Right. Oh, look at that. We mate. might need it. Oh, look that's that. very nice, that is. Very good, right. Sir M. Just up the sides like that. Well, what have you got right. there, Sir M? Well, we've got £24.11, less the weight of the sling. So the sling weighs what? It's weighs exactly three pounds. Oh, right. So you've got 21 11. 21 11, yeah. I'm okay. happy with that. Well done, mate. Let's That's good. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. I think that looks pretty heavy, mate. Yeah. I've got a lot of barbel. I did well on barbel. I've got a few more than I thought, Nick. Both of <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe this. What? You got sixty-two pounds less three pounds for the sting. You've got fifty-nine pounds. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Can we put it down now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you the maths, Sir M. Before we started, we had twenty-four pounds eleven ounces. Yeah. Our total catch today was £80.11, ounces, Agreed. which means we've got a grand total in our keep net to carry us through the difficult Welsh leg of the journey of £105.6, ounces, which I yeah. think is a right old result. I think we can give ourselves a big pat on the back yeah. and go back to the van for tea and medals. Well, I'll pat you on the back. Thank you. And you can pat me on the back. I'll pat you on the back. There Good. you go.